So my overall goal right now is to focus on my hip thrust. So my coach kind of helped me design a program where I'm doing a really, really, really heavy hip thrust day on Monday. Um, I do a squat day on Wednesday, but I incorporate more hip thrusting throughout. And then I do a, another leg day where the main movement is a power jump in the beginning, but we're still incorporating more hip thrust and posterior exercises like deadlifts throughout the workout. So we're starting with power jumps. But the difference between a power jump and a lot of the jumps that you see on Instagram are this. So you'll notice that in this jump, what I'm doing is I'm swinging my arm forward. So bringing them forward actually gets you more momentum and allows you to get higher. Whereas what you'll see on Instagram a lot of the time, what I used to be guilty of, I don't know why we all jump this way, is you'll see someone jump up and then their arms go flying behind them. That actually isn't how you want to jump. Um, we want to jump like athletes, right? We want to be able to get as high as we possibly can. So swinging the arms forward for the upward motion is going to get us higher and more momentum and just more power. Right after the jumps, we're going to come straight into 15 hip thrusts. So again, this is where you want to pick a weight that you feel like is good for you and also challenging for the last three reps of 15. So I'm doing five sets. So because we're doing power jumps, um, it's an explosive exercise where we're trying to hit the type two muscles. And so when we're doing that, you wanna rest appropriately. And I know that if you take a lot of classes or you do a lot of like Barry's boot camp or Orange Theory or whatever, or just classes in general, it's really common to feel like you have to rush into the next exercise. But to do it properly, especially when we're trying to hit those type two muscles, which we do through heavy lifting and explosive movement, make sure that you rest for three to five minutes. So what I would do is I would do the jumps, I would get my hip thrust over with, and then I would rest for a solid three minutes before I went back to the jumps. Okay, cool. So the next thing that we're gonna do is four sets of the Bulgarians into Nordics. So we're doing a little inner thigh action, we're getting the quads, the glutes, and working on that glute ham separation, okay? So for the Bulgarians, um, what I like to put focus on personally is leaning forward just a little bit during the Bulgarian instead of coming straight down. Um, I've noticed that when you have your back foot up and you try to come straight down, it tends to cause like this little arch in your back. Um, and so I like a little more of a lean forward. And with that said, trying to get your glutes in line with your knee is all, or just below your knee is going to allow you to also get more glute activation on the way up if that makes sense. So when you're coming down, instead of having your glute be above your knee, try to get that glute all the way down to the knee or just a little bit under, so that way you are getting more glute activation instead of there being so much pressure in the quads. Cool. So we're going to go straight into the Nordics. The Nordics are kill er, for your hamstrings, okay? If you want that separation from your hamstring up into your glute, you need to be working hamstrings, okay? Nordics are amazing. Um, I'm doing these with the band to show you guys how you can try to do them if you don't have a friend with you, but if you do have a friend with you, just have them hold your ankles down and tell them that they can press down pretty hard. They always think that they're gonna break your ankles. They're not, you want them to press down hard. Um, so with the Nordics, the idea is to try to fall forward as slow as humanly possible. Get as close down to the mat as I can without using my hands. And then of course, I'll put my hands down here. Um, and then even when you're pushing yourself back up, if possible, try to push yourself back up a little bit, but also use your hamstrings to bring you back up. So we're doing six reps of those, okay? You don't need to do too many, I promise, because they will get you sore. The last set we have here, we're upping the reps and we're reducing the weight a little bit. 
So this is kind of like we've already worked out pretty hard, we've stressed the muscles, so now we're just gonna build up that lactic acid, call it a day. We're going to do two sets of walking lunges for 20 reps, and we're going to do three sets of 20 goblet squats. With the walking lunges, the same thing applies as the Bulgarians. Lean forward slightly and then try to get your glute to be in line or just below with your knees so that you can get more of that glute activation. <sighs> Hurts so good, you know? It just, like, you guys will thank me later, I think. Maybe, maybe not, I don't. We're all just gonna see how this really lays out here, okay? Let me know. And then for those goblet squats, pick up a weight that you can knock out 25 times, not let it be super, super easy, okay? Um, make sure that the, the last like maybe 10 reps or so, you feel like you're really working for it. So I think you guys are really going to love this video. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And feel free to find me on Train With Chels for all my workout videos and clips at the gym. Or you can find me at Chelsea Rose Health on Insta just for like my daily life and stuff, if you want. Or you can just watch me here. Oh, my ankles are starting to hurt, my battery's gonna die, okay. Okay, love you, bye.